What might be the best episode of House of Dragons yet is A Dance of Dragons Season 2, Episode 4. We're here to talk about it in full spoilers, so make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and let's dive into this. Now, while Sir Christian Cole survived, once again, I was really hoping this was going to be the episode he was going to get burned into flames, fucked up, killed. He didn't, he's still alive, but... He has technically failed in his duty to protect the king as Aegon decides to fly out and do some of his own shit. This was a phenomenal episode and one that a lot of people have been hyping up for quite a while, specifically people who got a lot of the season early. And this was the one I was like waiting to see because the first three episodes of the season, pretty good. I liked them. But slow in terms of buildup. And I was very curious, how are you going to go? Now we're at the midpoint point, so episode four has got to blow us out of our mind. And yeah, it does. Not just in terms of the scale of war and what it now changes for the future of this kingdom, but also for what it changes in general of the context of what's now going on and specifically certain character development. So I am very excited to talk about this. This is, again, just... It feels like so much happened, and I love it. Now, as a point of reference, I don't know much about the books. I read the original Game of Thrones books years ago. Don't remember all the tiny details. So, book readers, I'm very curious to hear your guys' thoughts specifically and anyone who just en enjoys the show. So, I want to start with, like, everything under not surrounding this war. So, let's start with Damon first. Damon, I'm liking his storyline. I think he has kind of been one of those characters that has just overall been kind of an asshole to a lot of people, but specifically, he's now having these nightmares, and the usage of using Millie Alcock instead of just Emma Darcy, and that is the version of him having this nightmare, I think is phenomenal. I also think the usage of him going through like the corridor and seeing like someone with an eye patch and assuming that it is Aemon and it ends up not being Aemon, all fantastic in its own right. And all interesting for me to want to continue seeing those moments. So, I like what we're doing with Damon. I think he's fucking around a little bit too much. I'd like him to be a little bit more in the center of it all. But I assume, just as all great shows are, is sometimes those slow moments need to build and build and build. And then it pays off, typically. So, I'm hoping this whole thing with Damon and whatever he's going through is going to pay off eventually. Same thing with kind of what we have going on. With Alicent, her episode this time around, I think she's now trying to look into more of her husband's entire thing, wanting to find the books and everything like that. But what this episode really starts me from is how we are looking at it in the side of war and how Renera comes back towards the end of the episode, has that one phenomenal sequence as she pumps in and she basically says, let's fight with dragons. And she's willing to go herself and start burning these people. But the princess, Reneus, um, which I'm probably mispronouncing, who is incredibly acted by Eva Best, sadly perishes in this episode, which I have been, I low-key have been kind of feeling <coughs> that she was going to die this season. I didn't know where or when, but I felt that this was the season that they're building this character up so well. She's such a phenomenal actress. This character is really interesting. And the usage of how she's building up with her husband and specifically their conversation earlier in the episode to just the final point when even Renera's son is kind of challenging her, his, her views when she sits there and tells her the story. I'm curious to see how that now ends and furthers their relationship. But as it's rhetoric and seeing a, a, uh, blah, 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 too many A's, Aegon leaving and same thing with the princess leaving with their dragon to go to the same point in field you know something bad is going to happen here and at the same point in time you know Aemon has had this secrecy working with that with Aegon not being happy about this where he wants to be in the center of it Renera wants to be in the center of it but Renera is a little bit more headstrong and understands okay I'll use what I can but this entire action sequences on the field Yes, the action was great. It was brutal. It was phenomenal. Is it some of the best in Game of Thrones? I think there's an argument to be made for that, but I think the significance of the entire franchise, this is like one of the best moments ever. And the reason I say that is the usage of how you notice that Aemon is there with his big-ass old boy dragon. 
and he, they're hiding. And he sits back to let Aegon go forward. And some of that might be, let him die. He's an idiot. He is an absolute idiot. And now does that put Aemond as the rightful heir after him? Is that something that, you know, you kind of look at this in Aegon and Aemon's relationship specifically to Daemon and his brother, and it's kind of like a nice parallel, and I'm curious now to see Aemon takes the spot, right? He has to, or unless I'm wrong in thinking of something else, but that is now a changing game, but we'll talk about that in a second. But the fact that they all start pulling back, they're all yelling at Sir Christian Cold, these dragons go head to head, the dance of dragons, and she takes us apart I, I mean she was doing pretty good holding herself again but then Eamon flies in blows the fire and basically fucks his own brother brother falls and perishes unbelievably and then it just comes down to the princess versus Eamon and this dragon is brutal and for a second I was like oh she got out of here alive and then I was like wait 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 I've seen this before and the dragon swooped up grabbed him by the neck and I knew right then and there that was it for the princess and I you know what I had goosebumps I had everything around my body just completely overtaking it and it really it broke my heart it broke my heart to see that moment happen and it broke my heart because I love that character so much and that was the lastage of it and in reality is this hurts Renera's side so much Losing the biggest dragon, losing one of her greatest allies, and one of the few people that really understand her. And on the same part, on Allison's side, they lost another dragon, but they lost their king. And seeing Sir Christian Cole wake up, and like, like even him walking up to the his one guy and like patting him on, and then it's just the ashes of his skeleton. Such a great shot. And this is kind of one of those battles that it really feels that no one won. No one won. And no matter who actually did come out on the opposing side, no one wanted this. This was what Renera was trying to go against. And I love that. I love the usage of how it parallels to, again, the ending conversation of the last episode to now this one. And I overall, I loved this episode. It is one of those events episodes that you have to see right as it comes out. And I am so happy that I got to experience it. And I can't wait to experience it again and again. I definitely am very curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. What are your predictions going forward? Please leave your thoughts down below. And of course, until next time, stay classy.